all around the world in almost every civilization. There are stories of terrible monsters. Beasts that hide in the night. Terrorize the locals and even kill. But I believe that they're all connected. I believe that these are all Bigfoots. And I'm gonna prove it. I'm Jesus Jr. Did you hear that? Something's moving. I have a real strange connection with Bigfoot. It's been broken off from right here. It looks like it pushed back in. Do you in. see these? Do you see these white stripes oh, like right nail, now? Like oh, nail. Yeah. Big, thick nails. <sighs> you know, there's so many stories that are out there that I think are Bigfoot related that people have no idea are about Bigfoot. You know? And I'm trying to open their eyes. It's, it's time. Normally it's the uh, stereotypical you know, nerd. But uh, I'm probably the gangsterest nerd you'll ever know. Professional actor in Hollywood, the bad guy. TV and film. I've done over 50 movies and TV shows. Breaking Bad, I played Gonzo. Two Goats Henchmen. Since I was a little kid, I've been experiencing all, the, all this strangeness. That's where I remember seeing it. That's cool. I'm filming, I'm filming it. I don't know no eight foot tall natives running around here in all black. That's some sus This is for NVTV's YouTube channel. My name is Jesus Jr. I'm a Bigfoot researcher. Uh, I've been researching Sasquatch for going on over 20 years now. And what I'll be recounting here is uh, several experiences. Uh, I'll be putting forth video and uh, lots of photos of what I believe to be the cryptid hominid Sasquatch, or better known as Bigfoot. So a little bit about my research history uh, background would be uh, I lived in the forests for a very long time uh, the first time I ever heard Sasquatch was 20 years ago in the Lincoln National Forest where my mother worked in the forest department so she was privy to a lot of reports but since the forest department can't really research or investigate such things they'd let me know about the reports and I'd do the investigating for them. Of course, I didn't report to them, but uh, I got to do a lot of interesting research. So, one of the first uh, encounters that we'll be dealing with will be from also Lincoln County National Forest in uh, Cloudcraft, New Mexico. But a little more background on, on my research uh, history, I was part of the Falcon Project, for those who follow the Bigfoot world, uh, but unfortunately the funding was pulled, so that project never happened. And as you know, uh, it was a very extensive uh, choosing process for who was going to be on that project, and I was uh, pretty honored to be chosen for that. I was also part of the cryptid hominid research on the genome for cryptid hominids uh, with Oxford University at 13... University blind study uh, and worked with multiple university uh, anthropological uh, heads uh, from Ohio State like Dr. Meldrum and uh, from Gallup, New Mexico, which is Dr. Dyer. Of course, there was controversy every which way we hit. You know, I know uh, Melba Kitchum. Um, friends with her, I know her background, the DNA work she did uh, with the Erickson Project, and long story short, I'm well versed, I'm well versed, I've researched a lot, I'm familiar with uh, footprint forensics, uh, also, you know, the study of, of apes, and man, and the differences between a Sasquatch uh, and uh, average ape such as you know gorilla or chimpanzee and where they are and where they aren't so hopefully that'll give you a little more background on me and i'm not just some novice that is just like out there going ah look for bigfoot so i know everything i don't know everything i'm still learning a whole bunch but i do know a lot uh, i've seen bigfoot i've heard him i've heard him speak 
We've whistled back and forth. We've communicated in various ways. I believe that Sasquatch is not just an ape. I believe it is a people. They have a language. They can speak, unlike chimpanzees and gorillas that just don't have the vocal construction for speech, as we know speech for humans. These creatures have been around for a very, very long time, and they'll probably be around when we're gone. So, here it goes. My first encounter, uh, which was, I would say, v quite substantial of an encounter, uh, was in Bailey Canyon. In Bailey Canyon, New Mexico, in the Lincoln County National Forest. It's Billy the Kid and Mescalero Apache Tribe Stomping Grounds. I researched the area, and there's been quite a few Bigfoot sightings there. So I began my multi-year research into that canyon. I found footprints and took photos of what seemed to be adolescent big feet, big little feet that is, Bigfoots, baby Bigfoots. I'll include those pictures of uh, two, what looks like two baby Bigfoots clinging to a tree. I didn't know they were there when I took the picture, but until I zoomed in later, I saw that they were there. I have pictures of adults peeking and some others, I'm just not sure what they are. I look for tracks and follow tree structures, they leave for each other and eventually they would make some kind of noise, purposely to let me know they're watching me. It might be a vocalization or going back and forth wood knocking with me. I'd whoop sometimes or do a specific whistle so they knew it was me. Uh, so they'd know that I was someone who didn't mean them any harm because I'd been there so many times. I'd normally do my research alone until I recently got married, going on three years ago. Uh, we researched together now, me and my wife. Um, I used to be a very solitary person uh, before I began uh, the world of acting in Hollywood and being on the television show Breaking Bad and a whole bunch of other stuff, but my movies and TV is not what's important here. It's what I did in between those. When I was in front of the cameras or for, with friends or my fans or any of that, I was usually alone. I uh, didn't have a very huge social life outside of my research. Uh, I love Bigfoot hunting and UFO hunting and ghost hunting. Uh, that's just what I enjoy. I'm not like your average actor that likes partying all the time. Well, every so often I'd get a non-believer challenge me and say they want to go with me on a hike up there to show me how everything can be explained without it pointing to a giant make-believe monkey. I always chuckle every time this happens because I know Bigfoot's very real. It usually would take a day hike consisting of not too in-depth searching because there's so much to show them that it usually leaves them mystified. The occasional footprint, abundant tree structures in the area inhabited by these beings is usually enough to leave them scratching their heads, questioning what's reality and what's left of their former strong knowledge of the unknown. Every once in a while, I'd get someone that truly would get excited by getting proved wrong, and they'd want more. This happened a couple years ago. It was a youngster. Well, I consider him a youngster because he was under 20 years younger than me. And then I'm in my mid-40s. We'll call him Kenny. It's not his real name, but just out of respect to his privacy. Uh, we're going to call him Kenny. Okay, old Kenny. So I took old Kenny out there one afternoon and showed him trees so large that had been moved and placed uh, specifically into formations of X's. Uh, they could have only been moved by crane. But how do you get a crane up a mountain, up into a certain area, without knocking down all the other trees and leaving a trail? You can't do it. And... Around these trees, there's other ones woven like hair without breaking or splintering at all. It, it was then that I saw he had opened his mind, because after I showed him these things, and he just looked, looked at me, and he didn't have that, that uh, I know everything look anymore. 
he he'd scratch his head and just be like, uh, "Well, you got me stumped." So here's a little more background on good old Kenny. He is a good old boy that would go antler hunting throughout the New Mexico mountains every year during elk and deer molting season. So in his own words, he he said, "I've been up and down them mountains and never seen Bigfoot anything, not one time." So I decided to take him up there and show him, right? So we were up there, and uh, we decided to set up a tent. And after we did that, uh, I took him hiking, looking at all that stuff that I just mentioned a second ago. So now it was evening, getting dark, and uh, we settled in, waited a good few hours, didn't hear a thing, not until 1 a.m. at least. That's when we heard footsteps near our tent. We, what looked like a giant hand pressing on the tent uh, ever so gently, pushing on the side of the tent, to be specific. We didn't know how to explain it. It was just a giant hand pressing on the side of the tent. And heard footsteps, so we're guessing it's Bigfoot. Of course, you know, up until this point, we can't tell for sure, but um, me and my hand look like a little little girl's hand, uh, and I'm a big dude. We had duct taped the uh, top vent of the tent uh, so the hot air wouldn't escape, but it got so cold that uh, the tape wouldn't stick anymore. Uh, Bigfoot decided to pull it back. At the right side of my uh, of the tent where my friend was sitting, uh, something started sniffing. It started at the bottom of the tent, you know, and you just hear <laughs> all the way to the top of the tent, which it wasn't a short tent. I was able to stand in it, and I'm six foot three. But it, it sure did sniff all the way to the top. Then a giant arm reached under the tent, almost knocking over little Kenny. And I angrily shouted, well, without sounding really angry, just more like loudly shouted. Uh, so after it almost knocked down Kenny, I yelled, no, bad Bigfoot. And the arm pulled out rapidly. Kenny looked at me in shock and bewilderment and asked, did you just scold a Bigfoot? I looked at him and shrugged my shoulders and replied, well, what else should I have said? That's when the Bigfoot lifted the vent hood and started looking in and down at Kenny. Kenny just kept on repeating, Oh, God, it's looking at me. I can see its nose. I can see its nose. I could see after a few more long seconds, he was about to really freak out. I said, Cool, huh? You believe in Bigfoot now? He just kept on repeating, I can see its nose. I pointed at the vent opening with my flashlight and again said, No! Bad, bad Bigfoot! And in the most not angry voice I could, because I don't want to get my butt kicked by a Bigfoot. I assumed it got out of the, view, the, the vent's view uh, for the moment. There were more than one, and the reason why I know that is because after uh, I got home and enhanced the, the photos that I, I'm including here, uh, there was two looking in. Well, they circled our tent until daybreak. I talked to them in a one-sided conversation about what was going on with the military sending drones over their territory. And I tried to use the caves, or tell them to try to use the caves there as much as possible so they don't get caught. That canyon's only 45 minutes from a military base. As soon as it was light and all was silent, we ventured out to inspect the area around the tent. And sure enough, uh, where that arm went under the tent, the soil was disturbed. I included a picture of that. Old Kenny looked up at me and said, You can keep my tent, bro. I'm never going camping again. He wasn't being funny. This experience shook him by his foundations. We packed up and drove off. I never heard from Kenny since. That was quite a night. Um, it's 
not an issue of me being not scared of these creatures, but I have been dealing with them for a long time, and, well, they haven't hurt me once. And uh, I don't intend to hurt them, and I'm pretty sure they understand that. So I don't get scared when they're around, unless they, of course, were to, you know, act violent towards me, which they haven't. But, uh, yeah, there's video that I am including uh, of a sighting I had on the Navajo Reservation in Upper uh, Fruitland in northern New Mexico. They don't step uh, Footage speaks for itself. I was using a very expensive camera, and you got to understand that even though it's not the best footage, um, I was zoomed in all the way. I was a quarter mile away from where it was, and I was on the off of the highway, so... You know, I'm sure there'll be the, the, the few out there going to be like, What did you do? You filmed that with a potato camera? No, I filmed it with a very expensive camera, but because I was all the way zoomed in, quality has been affected. And if you zoom in even more, yeah, it gets even worse. But you can clearly see it walking. We went behind that hill on. Mm-hmm. I think it's squatted down behind those, the, right by that bush, the light colored ones next to the big green one. Yeah. Where it was walking, I think it just stopped there and just chilling because it think it saw us maybe. Yeah, I seen it. It was way up on this yellow part, huh? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was big. Ooh. I think so. I can see it peeking over now. Because there's the giant bush closest to us. Then a little square thing, and then a, a, another bush after that, right on the right. Yeah. Then to the left of that bush is a bunch of like brush, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's behind that brush, and he's poking his head over, looking at us. Uh, uh, uh. Straight up. Watch my binoculars right now. Holy shit, that was cool. Alright. Just... I think they travel down this wash, don't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. Because that's probably like the second time I've seen it. But this one was a little bit closer. The other one was like a little further. And this one, plus this one's bigger than the first one I've seen right here. Do you have a license or no? No. I was gonna say, you guys go ahead and just leave me here and I'll start walking over towards it. <laughs> Filming. You know, you guys go ahead and drop out the jail trees and stuff. Come back for me. <laughs> Fuck it. I need to pull over somewhere here. Better. Like right across the street where we were. Right where, where the cops won't fuck with, you know, mess with us. Uh, will you hold will you hold the camera? Hold on. It's filming. I'm, I, look, 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 there, peeking over. Those bushes are okay. Holy cow. Okay, now I see what you're talking about. Come on. Turn around here, okay. It's gone now. Oh, it's, it's behind those bushes. It's the way supposed to move. That's the thing. Right here, he keeps on poking his head over this right here, while looking at us. Right there, okay? Uh, the second encounter I want to talk about is also in northern New Mexico. Uh, and I got really close to, to the Sasquatch. It was, you know, right in front of me. And I could see it. It was big. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, recount that to you. I wrote it down. So I'm, uh, I'm going to read it to you, okay? This encounter took place in northern New Mexico during a get-together to submit DNA samples for the Cryptid Hominid Genome Project. I was invited to participate in these submissions of DNA samples given to participating Sasquatch researchers and a local New Mexico University head of anthropology to a location on a private ranch where fly fishing is popular and reports of Bigfoot activity. 
have been accounted for. It was an overnight gathering. When I arrived, I was dismayed to find out that no actual hunt or investigation were to be had at this gathering. As we all sat around the campfire recounting encounters and theories, I said it was a waste and a shame we weren't taking advantage of this situation and location. Being unable to contain myself, I wandered off into the night to investigate the area. A fellow researcher soon followed to join me on the hunt. Again, I'm not going to include his actual name, uh, but those who follow the Bigfoot research uh, closely, mine and others, they'll, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out who I'm talking about. We'll just call him Old Billy Bob. And uh, this is how it went. We approached a man-made irrigation canal in the wooded area just south of San Juan River where a makeshift bridge made of large PVC pipes covered with a metal grate from one end to another was. There were a lot of cattle on this property and they had worn out a tunnel through the brush throughout the wooded areas, many of them. One such of those tunnels ran alongside this water canal. Old Billy Bob decided we should go down the dark tunnel because he thought it looked squatchy. We were using the moonlight only during this night hunt. It was about 25 degrees out and felt even colder. I said, you go ahead down that creepy tunnel and let me know how that goes for you, little buddy. I'll keep watch on this here old rickety bridge. And he was off. He took off down the little tunnel. As I stood there smoking a cigarette, I heard a movement of some sort to my right off the bridge in some tall grass by the water's edge. The brush was a good four to five feet tall with tree coverage reaching down to the tops of the brush. What could it be? The rest of the research crew were a good hundred yards off by our camp. Was it a cow? A coyote? Or maybe a bobcat? Or a mountain lion? Heck, it could be a chupacabra or a skinwalker for all I knew. I thought to myself with a nervous laugh within. <laughs> oh, this is not good. This is something. Because I can hear it moving around in the bush. You see, research in Sasquatch, and from my encounters with the big guy, I knew he was a great mimic of all creatures of the wild. And there's been tons of other uh, you know, accounts of people saying that uh, Bigfoots would uh, mimic birds and even voices, you know. And some believe that that's how some of the kids are kidnapped in the forest. Because they'll hear their mom calling for them, Timmy, come over here. And a Bigfoot apparently just heard a mo one of the, I guess the mom say something like that, and the little kid just wanders off and is never seen again. But what if this was a Sasquatch right there within a yard or two of me? What could I do to get a response from him that no other wild animal would be able to do but an intelligent hominid, possibly? So I got my lighter and tapped it three times on a small rock I had picked up and put it in my pocket earlier, and I waited. I repeated the action again, tap, 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 and I listened, tap, tap, I couldn't believe my ears, did I just get a response? So I did it again, this time it made three taps back to me, and three more times after that. During my breakthrough of uh, communication with this mysterious tapper, I heard old Billy Bob call out to me, Hey bro, come over here. This looks real squatchy in here. I think I found a nest. I tapped again, and again it tapped back every time. I'm guessing with a couple rocks, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Bigfoots don't have pockets, but whatever. I whisper yelled back to Billy Bob, and I said, No, you come here. There's one right here. He didn't take me serious and repeated his previous statement to go with him. And I replied back, Dude, get over here. There's a Bigfoot right next to me. Get over here. He begrudgingly walked over with a beer in his hand and a cigarette hanging from his lip with a very annoyed look on his face. He said, Come on, bro. Stop messing around. I motioned with my finger to my mouth. Shh. And pointed to the bush. I then did the tapping thingy again and we waited in silence nothing 
I did it again. Nothing. Old Billy Bob had a look of annoyed disbelief on his mug. In my head, I thought, damn it, Bigfoot, don't do this to me right now. I tapped one last time. It tapped back. Bill Bob's eyes opened wide, and then out of nowhere, he dove straight into the tall grass where the tapping came from. Whatever it was, was big and took off with loud breaking branches as it fled from old Billy Bob's Olympic dive. He called out to me to follow him, but I wasn't trying to get my butt kicked by a startled Sasquatch, as I said before. He then yelled, Bro, I found where it was sitting. It's still warm. Get down here. I replied, Um, I'll head him off at the pass. And I ran around the trail to the other side of the trees and was met with silence. I could see the branches uh, silhouetted in the moonlight. Uh, it was a real, it was a full moon. So it was really bright and, yeah, you could see quite a bit. And like I said, you could see the all the branches silhouetted because it was, a tree that was right next to the canal, open space, uh, and then uh, right by that area was an open uh, f pasture for the cows. I then heard Billy Bob's voice, Jesus, Jesus, can you see me? I looked real hard into the trees in the direction of his voice. I could see the silhouette of a person, but strangely it was a huge silhouette, which was strange because old Billy Bob was a spindly little fella. I said questionably, pointing with my left hand, Yeah, you're right there. He replied, No, down here. I looked down to the right and I could see Billy Bob on one knee hunkered down. This meant the Sasquatch was right behind him. I told him, Get over here, man. He's right behind you. He scurried towards me and to the trail was I was on, uh, the Sasquatch then headed off to our left through the trees. We then took off running down the trail following the sound of breaking bush. Billy Bob then stopped me and said to stay there and keep perimeter. I ran around the corner down the trail while I waited. I stood there for a good minute. I'd been a bouncer for a good 20 years by then across the U.S. and with do my TV and film in between. When I'd be bouncing at clubs and bars, I would stand for hours. I'm six foot three and at the time weighed over 400 pounds. So I'd often shift my weight by taking a step to the left or to the right. It would ease the pain in my feet from standing so long. This instance of standing there waiting was no different. I took a step to my left. And as soon as I did this, I heard something or someone, rather, take a step as well in the brush ahead in front of me. It was Bigfoot. I thought to myself, well, if it made me tapping, maybe it'll copy my steps. So I stepped to the right, and I, sure enough, it took a step. I stepped to the left and to the right, and it would step with me. I thought to myself, uh, man, we're doing the Sasquatch shuffle, you know, because, you know, we're practically dancing to and fro. Well, I got ahead of myself, and I kept stepping left and right in place when the Sasquatch took its next steps to, to my huge surprise. No longer was it stepping in place. It took its steps towards me. I could see it. It was just a good four to six feet in front of me. I could see the nose and the cheekbones slightly from the moonlight. It was easily over seven feet tall. I'm guessing it was a teenager. That's when old Billy Bob yelled, they're coming out, and ran past me saying, run bro. I looked back at Bigfoot, and shrugged my shoulders and waved goodbye, and just looked down at me. And I walked down the trail after Billy Bob. We got back to camp and told the guys that we had, what had just happened. Billy Bob went back out with some of the other researchers to try and engage a Sasquatch for another encounter. I sit back at the camp. I figured those Sasquatch wouldn't appreciate being further harassed in their homes. When they got back, apparently I was right. One of the Sasquatch threw a pool ball sized rock at old, and hit old Billy Bob in the inner thigh, narrowly missing what would have been a seriously debilitating situation to say the least. The next morning we filmed the DNA gathering and submissions. 
Uh, and right as we were all departing, a rock flew out of the trees and hit a large branch, breaking it, and it fell on my SUV. We left promptly after that. There's been continued activity reported in that area for years. Uh, so that was a wild night, but in my research, I think uh, all those different instances show that they are intelligent. Uh, they are not out to kill us all. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's some mean ones, like over in uh, Anobia. Those uh, those Bigfoot seem pretty irate against humans, at least. Uh, I included some photos from my encounter uh, where the Bigfoots were looking at my tent of uh, two Sasquatch standing in a tree. One si well, one sitting on the branch, the other one standing. To the right of that tree is another tree, large one, and uh, you'll see uh, close-ups of a small, which I'm guessing is a juvenile Sasquatch, uh, just sitting there, per sitting on a tree watching me, his little, his little legs dangling. Uh, a lot of the photos that, uh, that I have, that I've taken, I didn't see the Sasquatch. I've taken thousands and thousands of images, and when I go back and I look through them all and enlarge every inch of the, the, the photographs, sure enough, they've been there watching me the whole time. And yeah, so many photos out there, I'm sure, are found the same way with the images of Sasquatch. And that's why a lot of them you call blob squatches is because uh, these are photos that people have taken and have had to zoom in. Uh, to see them. So you, when you zoom in on any photo, you're going to lose resolution. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why a lot of the pictures you guys will see aren't perfect, aren't crispy. You know, you got Todd Standing's images that are super crispy, high definition, and what does everybody say? Well, they must be fake. They're too perfect. So you can't win for losing. You know, all we can do is uh, present you with our evidence with what we are researching, what we find, and as uh, NVTV always says, you know, they're going to put up every bit of evidence they can. Whether you believe it's real or not is up to you. So, I hope you found my images and my uh, encounters interesting. Um, I appreciate you guys listening and w watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I say subscribe away. This is your big homie, Jesus Jr., Breaking Bad's Gonzo, uh, signing out and saying until next time.